two identical TJ5s and identical sun glare. God, that sun glare sucks. Go away, son. You got two identical CJ5s. How different could they possibly be? They gotta have the same frame. They gotta have the same axle. They gotta have the same motor, same transmission, same tub. Not even close. There is nothing. These, these two Jeeps couldn't be further apart. Well, these two Jeeps are from two different planets. These goats are from two different planets. Hey, sweep up your yard. When are you going to clean this up? Huh? What am I paying you for? So, this is a 74. That is a 77. 72 to 75, you get this package. All its curvy glory. 76 to 86 or 85, whatever, you get this package. Uh, I'm going to say the biggest difference right off the bat is the frame. Is one better than the other? Are apples better than oranges? I just don't know. Is 12 better than a dozen? So with the 70, with the 76 to 86 package, you get this frame. And this is a completely boxed in, completely boxed in, solid on both sides frame all the way down. One piece of the channel is welded into the other piece of channel. It's got all these random holes all over the place, all the way down. I believe it's wider in the back. Yes, the frame is much wider in the back than it is in the front. If you look, you can see the frame tow in there under the motor. That's how they were 76 to 86. I'm sorry. Blah. Now, it's nice having a boxed in frame because uh, it won't flex as much, it won't jack up your clutch linkage and all that stuff, and it won't twist as much. It's much stiffer, much stronger, but these have all kinds of different problems that the 72 to 5 do not have. 72 to 5 has an open frame on the inside. I'll show you that in a minute. So the problem with this frame is, for instance here, everything has to have a threaded hole up inside the frame with a welded nut on the inside. It's the only thing holding this leaf spring hanger on. If these bolts strip out, if these bolts break out, how are you going to mount your leaf spring? If these break on the trail, what are you going to do? You can't even get in there this way. You'd have to cut this hole out and get a nut in there and try to get it on top of these bolts. It's a serious pain. And when these get old, these bolts start stripping, breaking, rusting, causing all kinds of problems. That is dirt trapped for all eternity. Dirt gets in there, water gets in there, snow, mud. What does it do? It, it absorbs water and it rots from the inside out. How are you gonna waterproof the inside of this frame? How are you gonna spray waterproof paint on the inside of this frame? So, big problem with these is they rust from the inside out and you can't see it until it breaks. So that's another big problem that, uh, that I noticed with this, this boxed frame setup. To be honest, I don't like this frame at all. I like the open channel frame. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, the tub is also different. If you notice here, I still have all my gear. I just went wheeling yesterday, so I have all my survival gear in here. But if you notice, there's no toolbox. The seat goes all the way down to the ground. This is good and bad. The toolboxes are notorious for rotting away. The toolbox seats have to have their own special seat with, uh, with the hooks 
to rotate forward. They are impossible to find. The brackets are impossible to find. With this later tub, it's flat on driver and passenger side. Any seat can be put in here and fit easily. So I do like that a lot better. This is way easier to patch a flat piece of metal than a toolbox and all this boxed in and having to work on it from the inside out. I've, I've patched toolboxes, it's a pain. This would be way easier to patch. I like that a lot better. One thing I do not like about the 76 and up tub, I don't like this tunnel. I hate this tunnel. The older CJs had um, a bolt-in floor that was flat. And if it rusted out, you could just unbolt it and get a new one. When you're changing motors and stuff, you can't remove any of this. This is all stuck forever. You can't get to the bolts or anything. So it's really a mixed bag with these newer Jeeps with the, with the late 70s stuff. So also these do come with an extremely inferior Dana 20 rear end, which are prone to uh, axle leaks, axle tube bending, axles break really easy. This one has a 44 swapped in, which is a must. Uh, for any CJ5 that has a 20, you immediately have to swap into a 44. You can upgrade 20s, but um, it's a fortune to get them to as good as a stock one of these. Now, these do come with some upgrades. You do get the tilt column, and you do get the power disc brakes which is nice uh, it makes wheeling a lot easier and a lot more fun without having to have 20 inch Hulk Hogan biceps turning a manual uh, steering box the power steering is also a, a must <laughs> uh, do they even come with manual steering uh, in the third generation third generation is 76 to 86 somewhere around there. Second generation, 72 to five. And then the first generation, which was like your Willys Kaiser crap, was 55 to 60, uh, 71, something like that. So now let's talk about early 70s CJ. This is called your second gen CJ. So let's talk about the frame. So first of all, if you look here, it has an open channel frame. It's only boxed in the front where the motor is. The whole rest of the frame is open channel with uh, some bracing here and there. I like this frame a lot better. I prefer a box, um, an open C channel frame. This is C channel, it's the shape of a C. I, I, I like this better with just some uh, plates in here to reinforce stuff. There's certain places you need bracing, but here, you can get a nut in here, you can stick a bolt through here, you can drill through this. I mean, this is so much easier to work with on the trail. Um, these are riveted on. If something happened out on the trail, you could easily cut these off and get a bolt in there. Everything is a lot, these are a lot easier to work on. Lower emission standards too, these are easier to get through emissions. Now, to be honest, I do prefer the 11 inch drums front and rear than the AMC style disc. These, I don't know, I just like these better. They seem to stop more aggressively. I was talking about here, you have um, your lift up hooks and you have your box. These rot from the inside out and these are really fun to patch. You gotta take this off, you gotta work inside here, there's no room. And yes, this one has rotted out all the heck. I've patched it. Um, as you can see, um, I had it. Did a huge patch here i left this little chamber open for water and crap to get out and this is a quarter inch plate here that i patched with now you do need bracing this open channel you want bracing right where this perch is and the other perch and you need bracing there as you can see this one already broke so these frames do break pretty easily if you don't brace them and they flex more so but there's ways to fix that. So you want a brace there, you want an inside brace here, same thing on the other side. But I like this cross member too though. So this cross member 
is very easy to get to. The bolts just go up to the C-channel and you can get to the nuts. It's very small cross member. You can get to the drivetrain. Very easy to get your hands up in there and work on stuff. If you look at the third generation CJ, look at this monstrosity. Everything is way the heck up there. You can't, and look, look at everything that gets trapped. This is the worst design ever. So this is just gonna rust and collect crap. It's gonna have its own ecosystem here. Pretty soon palm trees are gonna be growing out of this crap. You just can't get in there. I hate these things. I don't like these at all. It's the worst design ever. And like I said, this cross member screws into the frame, right? Well, it's a boxed in frame. There has to be threaded holes. Well, they break, they rust, and then you have to make your own brackets. It happens all the time. So I find that really annoying. The other problem is they, the three speeds. Uh, all the three speeds that the third generation CJs came with, like this one, are garbage. The T-150 is garbage. The SR4 four speed is garbage. The T5 is garbage. Every transmission that this third generation came with is garbage except the T176, which has a lot of shifter problems, was pretty strong. And of course the T18, nothing beats a T18. So these came with a lot of garbage three speeds. What's, <coughs> what's cool about the V8 CJs of this second generation is you get the legendary, world-renowned T15. This is the Mac Daddy of all three speeds. It's a standard V8 three-speed. I've even seen these in Wagoneers, and uh, not Wagoneers, but um, J10s. So it's a really strong three-speed, good up to like 250 horse of abuse. Now, this has a 330 horse Chevy V8, and I've broken one of these in half already, but I'm violent and abusive. This can handle 330 horse as long as you don't do any hard burnouts. If your transmission is full of oil and you never do any hard burnouts, this will hold up to 330 horse, no problem, but you can't be violent. Um, what else? Steering. So this second generation, you get the poor man's base model, um, manual steering box. Now, I love these. Uh, there's zero problems. I've... They last a long time when I use them. People say they break all the time. I've never broken one of these. I've never had any problems with one of these. They're simple, they're cheap, they're really easy to get. You don't have any power steering hoses. These don't break off the frame. The problem with the third generation is you have a massive engineering defect right here. So you got this behemoth. This will constantly break this bracket, and you can see this bracket's already broken in half. So with this design, they put this flimsy quarter inch plate bracket in here, and it's nowhere near strong enough to support the torque that the, this thing puts out. Uh, so you have to brace this yourself. There is my sweet uh, all thread with coupler uh, Robocop steering brace. You have to make a brace on your own, or this is going to break your frame and your mounts. So that's a big problem with this. Another problem I have with the third generation is the steering shaft is always rubbing holes in the lines and the high pressure. This is the high pressure and then this is the return. The high pressure line always seems to be too close to the stupid shaft and I always have to replace these. If one of these breaks on the trail, you're not steering your Jeep. You're not, <laughs> you're not gonna have enough arm strength to wheel a whole trail without power assist. Even though this is manual steering and we got 33s, the second generation, 
I could, it's still manageable. It's not that bad, guys. Look. Look at that. It's not that hard. And it's not moving. When it's moving, it's like breathing, trying to turn it. It's super easy. So, which one's better? Which one's worse? You know, just get something and have fun. Just understand certain years you got to make certain repairs, certain things break, certain things were weak, certain things were good, certain things were better, certain things were worse. Do your research on these CJs uh, and figure out what's going to be easiest for you. Me personally, I love these early 70s, second generation CJ5s. Um, they're easier to get through emissions. Um, they're, like I said, they're easier to work on on the trail. I like the fr open frame better. I hate these seats. I hate this toolbox. Um, but look, I love this tub. You just unbolt this, this whole thing comes out from here all the way forward comes out. Dude, you know how you can put a transmission in from inside here. This makes uh, doing mods so much friggin' easier. This one, you can't. This is all you get. That's it. That's all you get. What can you do with that? What are you gonna do? Stick your hands in there and and look for lost Legos from your lost Space Marines Lego set? So yeah. And these come, all of these came with a 44 in the rear, a centered 44, and a 30 in the front. These, cent these centered 44s are freaking awesome. You can put 350 horsepower behind one of these with 33s or 35s, do burnouts every day that you wake up after breakfast. Not going to hurt it. These things are really, really tough. I've never broke a Dana 44 rear, ever. You got your front 30. These are excellent. These are freaking awesome. So, these can take a lot of abuse. I've never had a problem with a Dana 30 braking. The only thing I will tell you, if you get your Jeep airborne and you land a couple of times, you are going to break the spindle. Not the axle shaft, but you're going to break the spindle that this whole thing rotates on. Easy enough, though, it's very easy to replace. You just take all this off, and the spindle unbolts behind the backing plate. Very easy repair. Just bring a spindle with you on the trail. It's like a $50 part, $30 part. That's the other thing. Parts on these are dirt cheap compared to anything. Parts on this are cheaper than my wife's Toyota. So, yeah. Um, take your pick. They're both excellent. And don't forget, to pet your goats. And make sure they stay stay warm at night when there's a cold front. Look at the Jason Voorhees Friday the 13th 2 shed that my goats live in. Doesn't that look like the shed from Friday the 13th 2? <laughs> Alright, let's go pet some goats. So, Tiny, the reason why I called you in today, do you prefer the 72 to 5 CJ5 frame or do you prefer the 76 to 86 boxed in frame? I know these are very difficult questions, um, but it's for research for the purposes of this documentary. And your thoughts? Okay, you're no help. I'm gonna go ask your sister. Stuffing. What is the best year CJ5? Hmm? What's the best CJ5 motor? What's the best CJ5 three speed? Thoughts? Questions? Um, you're on the air, so, you know, keep it clean. Uh, stuffing? You there? Uh, uh, we are, we are live. Uh, there is viewers, uh, waiting for your answer. I have a feeling this is not going to go well. So, Duke, in your expert humble opinion from years of biting my finger and years of working on AMC era Jeeps what is in your opinion the best 
mid 70s to mid 80s Jeep CJ package. Speak clearly, speak into the mic. The public is waiting to hear your voice. Yes, the mic is live, it's plugged in. We got a monitor behind the camera. A what? A who? A how? Okay, this is not going well. Um, please don't shove the microphone in your mouth. This is, this, we're, we're live on the air. Okay, he's absolutely no help. So there you have it. What's the best year, CJ? I don't know. My goats don't know. My dog don't know. Hey man, what you like is what you like. What you dig is what you dig. Whatever you can get a hold of and get running and have fun with, that's the year Jeep for you. But at least now you know the good, the bad, the ugly, the ridiculous, the ludicrous of the two second and third generation CJs. Everything that's going on with them, what to look out for, what to watch out for. At least you've been given a fair warning about what can of worms <laughs> you're getting yourself into. They're just different years of can of worms. So, with those intense astrological thoughts, uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Junkyard Jeep. And here's some sweeping and tapping and shredding in the style of 80s docking metal. Catch you on the next one.